Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. So a minor exploit was discovered on the Nintendo Switch 2 within hours of its release, generating significant online buzz about the system being hacked on day one. So the exploit is basically a user land return oriented program, also known as ROP, vulnerability that allows for the execution of custom code at the user level, demonstrated by displaying simple checkerboard graphics on the console. So this exploit does not provide access to the Switch 2's kernel, root access, or the ability to install custom firmware, homebrew applications, or pirated games. The hacker who discovered the vulnerability has clarified that the current exploit is of limited use and does not enable broader modification or privacy. Now let's get into the key details of it, right? Basically, what does this current exploit allow? Is it big? Is it small? Is it medium? Basically, the execution of a small user level code snippets like displaying graphics. There is no access to system level functions, kernel or sensitive hardware controls. There is no pathway yet, 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 yet to custom firmware, homebrew or piracy. The exploit is considered a first step in the hacking process, but is not a full system compromise. Security researchers note that such exploits are common in new hardware and do not guarantee that deeper system hacks will follow quickly or at all. Let me know if you agree with that in the comment section. So Nintendo has implemented strong security measures and it may take months or years before a more significant vulnerability is found, if ever. Now here is how Nintendo is basically, they're like, okay, we see you. We see you, okay. Okay, so somebody hacked our stuff? Well, this is our response. So, so Nintendo is known for aggressively protecting its systems and intellectual property. Basically, modifying the console can result in the device being bricked or banned from online services. So the current exploit does not pose a risk to average users, nor, nor does it enable piracy or widespread system modification. Here is how Nintendo is probably or potentially going to you know, put some things in place to prevent further hacking efforts. They're probably going to enforce stricter user agreements and enforcement, right? So clear deterrence against unauthorized use. Nintendo's updated user agreement explicitly prohibits any attempts to modify, hack, bypass security, or run unauthorized software on the Switch 2. The agreement now states that violating these rules can result in the console or user account being rendered permanently unusable, essentially breaking the device or banning the account. So this clear and basically severe consequence acts as a powerful deterrent against piracy, modding, and other forms of unauthorized use. You know, now, I don't know if they, you know, hackers, you know, they're like, you know, they, they, they're probably going to say, bring it on. You know what I'm saying? They're probably going to say, bring it on. Like, all right, all right, you got that, but let me bring it on, right? There's enhanced technical enforcement, right? So the switches to firmware and hardware are designed to detect tampering or the installation of unauthorized software. So if such activity is detected, Nintendo can remotely disable access to its online infrastructure and digital content or even brick the hardware. So this technical enforcement is backed by the legal authority granted in the user agreement, making it much riskier for users to attempt exploits or modifications. There's, you know, they're closing loopholes and protecting the digital ecosystem. So by tightening the user agreement just ahead of the switches to launch, Nintendo is proactively closing loopholes that previously allowed for modding, jailbreaking, and piracy, right? Modding, jailbreaking, and piracy. So this especially is important as the Switch 2 is expected to rely more heavily on digital content, you know, making the integrity of the digital ecosystem crucial for both user experience and Nintendo's business model. They have supported, you know, security features as well. So in addition to legal and technical measures, Switch 2 introduces features like a pin-based, you know, system lock, which helps prevent unauthorized physical access to the device. So while not directly tied to the user agreement, these features complement the overall security strategy. There's also industry leading enforcement, right? Compared to other console makers, Nintendo's updated terms give it an unprecedented level of control, you know, over its hardware and user accounts, allowing for immediate and severe action against violations. So, you know, basically this positions Nintendo as one of the most aggressive platform holders in terms of security enforcement. Now, here's another factor that can play here, right? There's technical countermeasures that they are potentially taking too. So 
Technical countermeasures are critical in safeguarding the Nintendo Switch 2 against hacking, piracy, unauthorized modifications, etc. So one of the things that, you know, Nintendo can do to help, you know, if, if, they, if, they, are, if they care about advice or whatever, they can do hardware-based protections like tamper detection. So the Switch 2 is reported to have advanced hardware hardware-based tamper detection, even minor voltage changes from diagnostic tools can trigger defensive mechanisms causing the console to enter a boot loop or become inoperable. So this makes hardware level attacks such as voltage glitching far more difficult. There's the dual core lock step. So the processor uses a dual core lock step design where two cores execute identical instructions and a comparator checks for discrepancies. So if tampering or a glitch is detected, the system locks down, making traditional mod chip attacks extremely challenging. There's um, epoxy encapsulation and sensors. So potential measures, including physical protecting chips and epoxy and integrating sensors that detect tampering attempts, further raising the barrier for physical hardware attacks. There's secure boot and firmware integrity. There's the secure boot process. The switch to and you know basically they verifies the legitimacy of the you know of its firmware and it, and operating system through signature checks. This prevents unauthorized or unsigned code from running on the device. There's encrypted storage too. So internal NAND storage and game cartridges are encrypted and tied to the hardware, making it difficult to clone or manipulate game data. There's firmware recovery restrictions. So firmware can only be reinstalled through official channels and requires online authentication, preventing users from downgrading or manually installing, installing older, potentially vulnerable firmware versions, which, you know, creates a gap. They have some rapid response and exploits that they're, that they're doing too. So there's aggressive firmware updates. So Nintendo is expected to push frequent firmware updates that patch discovered vulnerabilities quickly. You know, basically access to online services may require the latest firmware limiting the window for exploitation. There's automatic bans and logging. So systems suspected of running unauthorized software or modifications may instantly be banned from online services. There's internal logging, you know, internal logging mechanisms that can detect and report unauthorized activity automatically. There is account and online service protection. So Nintendo has a history of disabling compromised login systems, enforcing password resets and encouraging two-factor authentication to protect user accounts from unauthorized access. The company may increase monitoring of online activity for signs of unauthorized software or account tampering and swiftly ban or restrict accounts found to be in violation. Now we talked about a little bit legal action and deterrence. You know, they're, they're not playing with, they're not playing with hackers. <laughs> You, you, you hack them, they, they coming with it guys. Like, so don't, don't just, just enjoy the, just enjoy the tool, right? They, they worked on it. Just enjoy it. Don't, don't, don't do everything. You know what I mean? Just enjoy it. So that's what I have for today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and that like button. If you appreciate this video and you want more videos like this, please let me know that by hitting that subscribe button and that like button. Also hit that notification bell. So you are alerted when I upload new videos. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you on the next video.